And it's not a time machine. You can actually smell spray paint coming out of this thing. Stainless steel. My nose right now is filled with the smell of spray paint. Alright, let's, let's go find uh, the Jeep show. I'm going to have to pull out my Mophie. I'm going to have to start charging this phone. So I'll charge it until I get to the Jeep show. So, this is the downstairs portion of the show. It looks like they've pretty much relegated the trucks and SUVs to the downstairs. The cars mostly are upstairs, the trucks down here. So this is the Ram show. Those Ram trucks, those are some big trucks, boy. Those are for big boys. Those are some big trucks. Now, all I'm looking for right now is the Jeep 2016. And uh, right now I'm carrying my Mophie on the back of my phone, recharging the battery while I'm walking. Here it is. There it is, right there. You can. Oh, but that's the that's the new that's the new Trailhawk Jeep. So I can take a look at the Trailhawk. And I think that's the Jeep. Yeah, there it is. That's the Jeep SRT. It's a shame that they didn't put all the SRT stuff together. Man, it feels really good to own trucks like that. I got a silver Jeep SRT and I'm gonna get the Hellcat. Feels so good to be able to say that. Thank God for America. Only in America, man, only in America. In other countries, it's like you guys got shitty engines run on diesel. So if you go too, if it's too cold, your car freezes up, you gotta inject your ray into the damn thing. No thank you, no thank you. Cause of your nitrous oxide emissions destroying the universe. Look at that. I don't know what color this is. Red-headed stepchild here. Okay. Look at that. Okay, so all I'm really interested in seeing... It's sad that they put this down here because most people are interested. Oh, it's locked. <laughs> Oh, this one has the uh, TVs in the back. If I had wanted that, I would have gotten that, but I honestly didn't want that. I, in fact, the video that I made about the 2015, when I first made a 2015 video, I had made a video that where it contained those uh, monitors. But to tell you the guys' honest truth, it's like that's something I really didn't want in the car, especially because you know the people used to break into people's cars and, and steal their monitors and everything. It's like I didn't want that. They're looking at that price of that wow, seventy thousand. They should have put this upstairs with the Hellcat. They should have put this upstairs. Why did they put this in the basement? You don't put this in the basement. Don't you have respect? No respect at all. Gotta put this up there with the Hellcat. Everybody else is just testing this out and they're like, how could I get $70,000? Meanwhile, me, I got one parked outside. Next to a Hellcat. <laughs> Feels good to be in America. Wow, 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 wow,
And I want to get in there so I can show you the stick shifter. What kind of color is this? So it's the 2016 Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT, 65,000. Doesn't say, oh, this is called the Night Special Edition. So the Night Special is like wine, burgundy, bay, well, you know, it's like wine, maroon. Well, it's like kind of like maroon. It's a nice color. I would never buy this color, but uh, I mean, you know, it is. this is really, really nice. This must be like a $1,000 paint job option. Everybody wants that SRTJ. Everybody wants one. A lot of people here in America and Canada love Jeep. But uh, me personally, it's like, I got one. <laughs> feels good to have one, doesn't it? It really feels good to have one. I got mine and so mine hides scratches. And you can't even see fingerprints on mine. You can see those fingerprints. Look at those fingerprints. Look at those fingerprints. Silver hides fingerprints, scratches. Yeah, Mr. Onagi wants one of those. He's like, oh, how much is this? Toyota boring. I don't like Toyota. Toyota boring. No Danielson. Oh. <laughs> now, what I'm gonna look into is I'm gonna find out whether or not it's possible for me to change my column shifter with this new column shifter. If I can do that, or at least just switch out the buttons, and I will do it. Hi. How you doing? How are you? You like these trucks, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah this is really awesome. Yes, sir. That's the point. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's right there. I just bought this truck, but I bought it in silver. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. How are you? <laughs> so good. Everybody, they should have put this next to the Hellcat. Yeah. Yeah. I just bought one of these. I got it in silver. How is it? No, I love this truck. I love yeah. it. it. It only gets 10 miles to a gallon, but you it's know. like my Ram. Oh, you have one of those big Rams. I have 1500. Yeah. I, I just bought a silver one of these, and I bought a Hellcat in red, a Charger. Yeah. When can I drive? When can you drive? He can't drive. Uh, I'll tell you what, watch the video on YouTube. It's called Age of Hellcat. Age of Hellcat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. up there on YouTube. It's, it's an awesome car, but man, these things are horrible in gas. Yeah, they have the red key and the black key, right? I got the two red keys, one black key with it. Nice. Yeah. Horrible in gas. So the eco button has been moved to the center. The stability track button has been pushed a little bit further over. The SRT button, when you push it, it doesn't look like it does anything yet, but I'm assuming that's because uh, the car is like locked out of, uh, it's locked out of uh, powering on. So, you know, custom mode doesn't do anything. Other than that, it's the same switch. Now, I want to see if I can get, you like this? It's a good truck. It gets 10 miles to a gallon. Yeah. I, I, I got it, I got it in silver. I love it. 10 miles to, it's a di different color though. They got this midnight purple really nice actually so the same steering wheel as mine same exact steering wheel the only thing it looks like they changed was the shifter column and the shifter has a little button on the back some people will recognize this shifter if they have a Cherokee or if they have one of the newer Jeep models They'll, you'll already recognize this but uh, this this shifter feels really good. This is exactly what anybody who bought a Jeep or buys Jeeps expects. So you got the Uconnect apps. And just like my Hellcat, if you touch and hold, you can reposition things, as you can see. You can reposition apps. But the problem is you have to have the vehicle on in order to do anything. So there's the nav, so there's the apps, the SRT performance. You gotta use the car has to be on and also it has to connect to the Uconnect store. I guess they haven't loaded it. Other than that, it's the exact same entire truck. But me personally, I have to find out whether or not because if I can swap out the wiring harness and replace my buttons 
with the buttons from this truck and I'll just order them or whatever, I'll spend the money and I'll just upgrade this entire section because as far as I know, it's possible to do it because we use the same eight speed. But if it's not, what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to alter it as much as I can. But other than that, it's the same. If I have to replace this entire console, I'll do it because it probably isn't more than about a thousand or two thousand dollars because you know these are parts that end up having to be replaced sometimes there's a car accident and the, the you know parts like here get broken so i'm thinking it's probably about two thousand dollars if that's the case i'll just do it i'll just get a full replacement srt come on do something custom oh that shit is hot okay this one has the uh optional Blu-ray disc player for the back. You know, CDs are going the way of the dinosaur at this point. It doesn't make sense to have a CD because you can have so many more gigabytes on an SD card. Yeah, so they're still they're saying the word Hellcat. If you say Hellcat three times, Rumpelstiltskin jumps out at you. Yeah, I love the I love my truck. I really do. I really do love my car. I like my color. I don't like the wheels on this truck. Let's make that very clear. I do not like these wheels as much as I like my wheels. My wheels are way cooler. I do not like the wheels on this truck. See, I don't have any children to sit in the back watching penguins and shit, so I don't really need these. Yeah, they upgraded the shift. Oh, yeah, they did. Hmm. Okay, well, now that that's done, now I can... Oh, they got Jeep material here. They got Jeep stuff. Okay. Cherokee. I think that's the regular Laredo over there. We got Mazda trucks over here. They probably have that CX-9 down here. Chevy's got their trucks. GM, Mercedes-Benz trucks. Trucks, trucks, trucks. Canada loves these Jeeps, boy. Yeah, Honda Pilot, no thank you. I'll go this way. Not even interested, Honda. Not even interested. The Renegade. And they have a new color called Dawn of Justice. This is the Renegade Latitude Dawn of Justice. Dawn of Justice Special Edition, and it's about 27000 And uh, I, I think this had something to do with the Batman versus Superman movie. Lost child, I'm trying to find them. Dawn of Justice Renegade. Huh? Okay, Mazda. Oh, they got more cars over there. Got Mazda. I think the uh, CX-9. The new CX-9 is, I think this is CX, uh, CX-5, CX, I think that's it right there, CX-9. Not a Mazda fan. Not a Mazda fan. CX-3. So small. So CX-9. We got a cop car area. Blue Lives Matter. I remember when I was a kid seeing these uh, Crown Victorias and and the Grand Marquis. a nice show. 
It's a shame that the media turned us on the police force. <laughs> Blue Lives Matter. If it was up to me, like federal agents would have black Hellcats with, with dark tinted windows and push bars. And they would drive around in Hellcats fighting crime. Federal crime, not, not just, oh shit, they got an I-3 driving section. Ooh, that's cool. Wow, they, this is a nice show right here. Usually they do this outside. Oh, this is that one-seater thing. I don't think this is gonna get built. One seat, really, really, really. One seater with that little engine. Where are you in the picture? One seat. I don't think that's gonna work. One seat. One of my uh, neighbors, when I was a kid, he had a motorcycle that looked exactly like this. And it, I think, I, I forgot what the name of it was, but it was like a 1980s or 1970s. It was like a jet, it looked like a cockpit of a jet. But see, the problem is now you have to, you know, meet all these requirements and regulations. So now you basically have to shape these things like cars. You know, you're not allowed to have something that looks like a cockpit and can possibly tip over. But I always liked that thing when I was a kid. I always thought that was so cool. What's that over there? Those are Nissans. No thank you. So they'll take you on a ride in the I-3. I might do that. You know, and the sad thing is nobody wants the I-3. The BMW around near here was trying to give these damn things away. Nobody wants that car. First of all, it's not fast. And then second of all, it's small. You know, if you're gonna build one of these things, you have to make it at least the size of an X5. And then on top of making it the size of an X5, you gotta get, you, I mean, you don't have to make it fast, but you know, you gotta make it, you know, the paint job is nice. I will give it that, it's silent. Oh, they got a bunch of cars here. They got the, uh, they got the hamster car, Kia Soul, hamsters. You can go with this, or you can go with that. Or you can go with this, or you can go with that. Oh, that's weird. You can go with this, or you can go with that. And then they got the i8, which is the car that more people actually want. But the thing was 150, oh shit. What's the, oh, that's the 392. Mm-hmm. Muscle, American muscle. You ain't getting this in Europe. American muscle. You can go with this, or you can go with that. Okay, they got an R8 over there. Oh, they got one of those uh, Prius, the new Priuses. All those quiet little electric cars, ugh. I tell you, when everybody is forced into these little pieces of shit, I'm still gonna be driving a Hellcat. I'll, I'll get two miles to a gallon before they force me into one of these goddamn things. Hellcat. Right. Hellcat. Jeeps. I ain't driving none of this little nonsense. Little nonsense cars. I should wait over there and get in there. Oh my god, I thought these guys were mannequins when they were sitting up in there. This is the Soul EV. Okay, I'm just hamsters uh, charging our electric car up. <laughs> Bunch of hamsters. What we got over here? Lexus, no thank you. Ooh, why don't you like Lexus? Because they suck. I'd rather buy one of them Genesis over an Acura RLX. Race cars. Are you American? Are you American? In fact, I've heard that the, uh, what is it? I've heard that the taxes and tariffs, if you're in, uh, what is it called? If you're in uh, Europe, the taxes and tariffs on these cars are so high that if you try to get an American car over there, you're paying at least twice as much. Not to mention the gas is like nine dollars a gallon. Oh, they got the old Jeep SRT. Look at that. This is like this is like a museum for people who actually love cars. The Jeep SRT, and then they got racing tires on the son of a bitch. What are these Mickey Thompsons? Racing tires. 
It's amazing how much bigger these things are. Mm -hmm. Mickey Thompson's. Oh man. So this must be an R8 <laughs> painted brim, uh, painted brakes. I don't think those are Brembo. Yeah, that's nice. Not interested. And you know what's funny? I could have bought an R8 for the money that I've spent within the last couple of months. I could have bought an R8 or a V10 R8. I don't want that. Not not to mention I'm like six fucking seven and I can't fit in it. <laughs> but you know, it's amazing how. Many, and then I gotta I gotta replace that Hyundai Azera. I gotta replace that in June. This is a GLA. Okay, I already made a video of me driving the GLA. This is the GLE. I think I, I think I already made a video of this. I already made a video of the, oh, this is the GLE AMG. I, I think I made a video of me driving one of these. I drive everything I can drive. This way I can compare it and contrast it. And they have a new GLS and the, the GLS. Basically, I like Mercedes' new naming strategies. With their new naming strategy, excuse me, they have the regular car, which is just a letter. And then they have the GL of that car. So they got the GLC, the GLE, the GLS. I really like that. That's actually very intelligent. And it's funny because a lot of these uh, enthusiasts were like, oh, yeah, that's stupid, that's stupid. But most of them weren't, they weren't Mercedes buyers in the first place. So you got to be really careful taking criticism from people who don't buy your product. You got to do what you got to do. Which one's this? This one doesn't have a sticker on the front. This is a plug-in hybrid, probably a GLE or something. Let me see what this is. It's a GLE 500E. Plug it in, plug it in. And the Mercedes killed the entire show. They, they really killed it. Oh no, they look like they They really, really killed the show. Yeah, Mercedes killed it. That E-Class is a monster. It doesn't even have to be fast, man. I'd buy one of those and that should only have a four-cylinder and it doesn't have to be fast. That thing is nice. Mm -hmm. The G-L-E-A-M-G. And you know the funny, the, see the sad thing is a lot of people do not cross shop cars, so a lot of people would never even know most of these cars existed unless they actually came to a car shop. Okay. The GLE, oh, some speakers that look like something out of Star Trek. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's a, you know it's pretty straightforward, straightforward luxury, you know. Turn that music down. I don't want to get flagged by YouTube. I hate YouTube flagging me for stuff. I make it so much more difficult than it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, it is awesome. This is quite awesome. My only problem is there's no touch screen here. <laughs> My gator just went off. Gator deactivated. I gotta say, white leather in these cars is, is quilted. And, oh, thank you. Looks good. Okay, they got TVs in the back. TVs, everybody want TVs in the back for the children's, for the little children. It's like the children, you know, when I was a kid, you know, children actually read books. 
No, now we got televisions for everything. Papa? This needs heated cold seats back there. That would be nice. Heated and cold seats would really be nice back here. Hmm. This is the BMW side. So Mercedes had the other side upstairs. They swapped it with BMW. This is the uh, X5M, excuse me. $100,000 for an X5M. I don't even know why they bother to put a 99, you know, common 9 anything. They just just put 100. Just say 100. So I don't, I don't have to remember all the subleties. This, and, and, and if you really look, you know, it, it's just not as exciting as the Mercedes. Mercedes Benz. And now that even Hyundai's got TVs and shit in the back of their cars, it's like Hyundai and Kia got TVs and shit. Just the Hyundai and Kia got whatever you got, basically, and then they'll sell it to you for twenty thousand cheaper. Yeah. Put it through the top. The top part, yeah. That should have been a touchscreen right there. If it's not a touchscreen, it's just not as easy to use. I wonder if the Oh, they don't even have it there. Cool. X5M, huh? Yeah. What and, and furthermore, if you're gonna do car shows, don't don't bring the black dark interiors. Bring the lighter color interiors and your moon roofs. You need panoramic moon roofs to let that light in. It's like my god. I didn't even go to art school, and even I know that. This is ugly. Look at the predator face on this ugly thing. This thing is ugly. The seats are flat and lifeless. I think they're better models than these stupid cars. Ugh. Ugly, so ugly. It looks boring. It smells bad. And it's that leather smell. You know how you get into a brand new car and you smell that leather? The Laguna leather in my Jeep smells fantastic. This thing smells like, uh, this thing smells like Kyoto. My God, this is confusing as fuck. Look, look at this. this how look how confusing all these knobs are. Mm. Confusing. So it does look longer, and it is. It's a little bit wider as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Not at all. I don't like this one. And on either side of that single shape grill, you'll see some L's and that's sign language. Basically, you put L's all over Ugh. the vehicle. I don't that like this. That means some inspiration from our LSA and put it on this vehicle. This is the it's RX, their best the seller. And the L-shaped tail lamps in the rear. Now it's sitting on 20 inch wheels. Those are optional. 18 and 19 also are available. And then let me open up all the doors. You can see inside the vehicle as well. Feel free to stay in there, sir. One of the first oh, things yes, that you'll notice is that 12.3 inch multimedia display. It is a split screen. So that allows you to see your navigation very big, but you could just take a half of it if you wanted to with your navigation and have your satellite radio, for instance, on the other half. Now, speaking of displays, we also offer a brand new heads-up display. It's colored. That would be right above your steering wheel, and you can program it to see things of your liking. So fuel, for instance, how fast you're going, and also um, the weather. And then if you get the inside of that cockpit, you'll notice that it's driver designed and optimized. You've got a little palm rest right there with a remote touch. That's how you're going to control that big 12.3 inch display. And a big confusing 12.3 like inch display. Beginning. This thing is confusing this is the as hell. This is model, so you gain extra space back there. I encourage you to get inside. Those seats are yeah, that's heated. a big screen. Uh, they're yeah. available to be heated in the rear seats. And then also they can fold down power folding as well. Now they do fold down 40, 20, 40. So you can have two passengers sitting back there, have that middle seat folded down, and fit things like your fishing pole or your skis or whatnot inside. Fishing now another pole. feature we have, which I can't show you unfortunately because I don't have the key fob on me, but if I did, 
I can walk right up to the lift gate right. and just do this with my hand, or this if I'm carrying my purse, for instance, or my groceries, and the lift gate would open up automatically. Since I don't have the key fob on me, I'm just going to touch that once, and it will open up. Something else that's nice about it's this so lift gate ugly. is you can stop it at any height. I don't like this. And it will. I just spent damn near two hundred thousand dollars in cars, and I still got another forty thousand dollars to go. And I would never buy one of these things. I would buy another Hyundai first. I, I, I just don't, ugh. I'm getting out of here. I, I feel dirty. I'm, I'm sorry. Ooh, look at this. Oh, you mean me in front? Right here. We have, you can choose a background. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, so like San Francisco, the beach, or whatever, the What, and get it emailed or something? Yeah. I don't know, what, what are the options? So I have to put your name and email on it first, then you'll email. Oh, okay, to add me to the mailing list. Um, no, to send your photo to your email address. Oh, good, point, good point. That's cool. I have mobility, so hold on. Okay, so this is the police show. So they have, this is the 58 Ford Custom 300. Seventy four Plymouth Satellite Custom. It's amazing that these cars could even move back then. I just find that just absolutely incredible. Plymouth. And here you go. These are the new oppressors. Ford Taurus, a car that nobody wanted. If you ask most cops, especially Highway Patrol, they all prefer the Dodge Charger. It's because the Taurus has that ridiculously bulky center console. So in the police custom cars, what they usually do is they take that out so that they can, you know, not have to take off their gun belts and everything. Yeah, they should. <laughs> if I want to see police videos, I'll just turn on YouTube or Facebook. Hi, uh, how much is uh, Sprite? Four sixty-five. Four sixty-five. My goodness. Yeah. That's the same price in this building. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's a, it's a exhibition building. Okay. If I had wanted a, a regular twenty-ounce soda, it would have cost me four fifty. So I chose instead to get the fresh fruit shake, and the fresh fruit shake. It was six fifty or seven dollars or something like that. I put it on my uh, debit card. I didn't even give a damn. But uh, very tasty. Very very tasty. Mango, pineapple, banana. Very very tasty. I think I'm almost done because I think I've seen like the entire show at this point. I may go back upstairs and take a quickie look. Some some things I've already yeah. taken a look at. I might go back to the Mercedes Benz or the BMW side. See, the I'm I'm a little disappointed that SRT isn't its own uh, division anymore, because when SRT was the division, they would have had all of their cars together, where you would have seen all the SRT products simultaneously. I think my video, my final video may come out to about two hours long, but I really want that 256 gigabyte. If I have a 256 gigabyte iPhone 7, and I've got this Mophie, this Mophie 8X will allow me to literally video record for four hours straight instead of uh, two or three hours. Because the problem is 4K video eats up 300 megabytes every single minute. So that's a big problem if you want to do really long videos, you know?
I'm proud to be a Jeep buyer. I'm very, very proud to own a Jeep. And I'm even prouder to own a Jeep SRT. Very, very proud of my vehicles. I love my cars. There's car wars out there. Wrangler. Oh, I'm sorry, Rubicon. I don't really know the bigger models that well. I'm guessing the Rubicon is the smaller version of the uh, Wrangler or something like that. I really, I only pay attention to SRT products. Everybody love that Jeep Grand Cherokee. Especially me. Damn, I love my cars. Even baby Huey loves the Jeep Grand Cherokee. All right, everybody, let's turn up the gangster rap and let's bust a cap. Ford. I'm guessing the new F 150s are here. We got that gangster rap turned way up. Turn up that gangster rap. We're balling. We're big money ballers up in this Jeep. We're gangster rappers. Hi. You know, I remember the good old days when you actually understood what people were saying in rap songs. Not anymore. Jesus Christ. What happened to the next generation after me? How will they ever afford Jeep products that are $70,000 when they're, when they're trying to climb out of student debt? How will they ever afford that? How will they ever afford that? I don't know. A lot of those tough guys run them trucks. Big tough guys. It's a big American right here. Look at the interior of this. He's ram truck. This guy right here, you know this guy's a tough guy. He's got his dickies on. This guy's a tough guy. Whoa, Jesus, look at that. Oh my. Look at all that brown. Damn. Well, tough guys. Look how wide this seat is. See, this is America. This is America right here. Look at that. It says Laramie. Jesus Christ, look how big this thing is. Yeah, little lights. This is 
And it's got it's got the easy connections for the uh I actually like it. Damn thing gigantic. the SBT Raptor. I saw one of those things on the road. It was pretty big. It was pretty scary. But you know what? They're about to put the Hellcat engine in a Ram truck and they're going to have a Ram Hellcat. Jesus Christ, what is the world coming to? Ram Hellcat. I can't even believe it. Jesus Christ, look how big this thing is. What does this thing weigh? Like 10,000 pounds? truck must weigh like 10,000 pounds or at least 8,000 this thing is look how big this thing is this thing's taller than I am power stroke 6.7 liter Jesus this thing's a monster but this is this is a real truck for real men real Americans more money for this than I would for Oculus Rift. They ran off the road. simulate a rollover event. Uh -huh. Oh, that's interesting. Ford Expedition. Platinum. I haven't seen a Ford Expedition in a long time. This was one of the first SUVs I ever had, 2002 Ford Expedition. And I can see it really hasn't changed that much. It's, it's still like one of the biggest things you can buy, like if you buy this or a Navigator. I think they probably come with twin turbo V6 engines now, EcoBoosts. Sorry. No, 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 it's, no, no, it's fine, fine. I'm, I don't mind getting the ambience. No, sorry. You have one of these? We have we have the limited 2010. We love it. It comes with the big V8. The five, they don't make them anymore. The five. I, I, the first SUV I had was a 2002 Expedition. Well, you know they tried. We love it. We love it. Yeah, really. Keep it in the garage, so you know. Yeah. Now they got little these, you know. I just bought a Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT. Oh, nice, you nice. Know. Good truck, silver. Awesome, beautiful. Yeah, oh yeah. Very good truck. Yep, and there's the Flex. I had thought Ford had given up on the Flex, but they still make them too. They still got the, the Sony radio in there. I think that was that. It's a garbage can here. Yeah. I thought they, they got a 
think they'll have if they I don't think they're gonna keep the flex around but the flex actually was a pretty decent idea the only downside is the retro styling is just so boring you know you you, you have to see that's the problem most people are basically buying wagons but nobody in America likes the word wagon so you have to call it a crossover you got to call it a sport bag or you got to call it a sport hatch or you got to make up some kind of ridiculous name to lie about the fact that what the person is really buying is a wagon because the problem is wagon sounds effeminate and even the women don't want an effeminate car the women want something that gives them the feeling of power so my thing is listen if you want power what you got to do is get yourself a v8 you gotta get yourself a nice fast v8 yeah you'll get about seven miles to a gallon but hey at least you'll feel powerful on the road, won't you? When everybody else is driving around these silly little crossovers. Well, here it is, the Sierra. GMC Sierra. Man, the car market's on fire. A lot of those tough guys running trucks. Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> no thank you the fj oh my god what's that thing back there that shit looked like some back to the future marty mcfly versus biff tannen and the boys truck back here what is this tonka jesus well, i'll tell you what the day that i have to uh drive through the desert I think I'd, I think I'd pick one of these. Sorry guys, you can't be up down there. Oh, you're a spoiled sport. Stop ruining our fun. Stop ruining our fun, dude. Everybody's trying to sign you up for emails. Sorry. No, no, see, you could. You're good. A bunch of everybody's their own news journalist now. I'm gonna go back upstairs. I think I'm done with truck, truckosaurus, truckosaurus Rex. I'm done with trucks. I, I came for what I, I saw, what I needed to see. Jeep SRT, CT6, XT5. I saw what I needed to see for now. Okay, so this is the third and final part of the show. This is the Javits Center North. Now, granted, there are two exhibits outside, the Jeep and the uh, Toyota RAV4 exhibits where they let you uh, sit in the car and, and uh, actually, you know, go up and down the track. But uh, this is the third wing and the final wing. So they had the trucks downstairs. So this is the third and final wing. So this is Mini, Mitsubishi, and if I'm not mistaken, part of Toyota's over here, but it's only Scion. Yo, let's get in the Ryan over here. Mini. This is a Mini Cooper S hardtop. This one. Oh, it's Fiat's. This is the Fiat show. It's a 500X. Fiat 500X. They kind of look cool, but see, ultimately, the real problem with these cars is they have to be at a price point that your average college grad who's 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 neck deep in debt is going to be able to afford. Like the, the average college grad has $40,000 worth of student loans. And the reason why is because here in America, uh, most of the private colleges are charging thirty dollars to $40,000 to stay on campus and to, uh, you know, be a full-time student. 
So basically, the average college student has so much debt that they can't even hope to afford cars like this. So basically, coming to this car show is as close as they're ever going to get to one of most of them. You know, some of these cheaper ass cars like this IA, they might be able to afford. Interior kind of looks cool on this. I like this. Very flat back. Very flat. It's an IA. So it looks like kind of like a little BMW ish. Except those cheap ass doors. 2016 IA. So this is 17595. A $20,000 car loan is still gonna cost you. Oh my god, it's all manual. Ugh. Jesus Christ. So, basically, you know, they copied the BMW iDrive design so that they could, ooh, you push the button, the start stop button. I agree. Can I push this? Oh, thank you. Unlike BMW, they give you a touch screen and they give you a, a simple to use volume knob. I like that. And they give you a very simple to use uh, nap thing. Now here's a question, BMW, why didn't you do that? Here's a question, Mercedes, why didn't you give me a knob thing so I could just do like that? Why didn't you do that? Nav, east, southwest, yes, thank you. Somebody stole all the freaking knobs. Jesus Christ. You gotta switch, you know, actually, I'll tell you what, if this car didn't have these crappy cloth seats, this would actually be a pretty nice little rental economy car if this thing didn't have these ugly little cloth seats. Uh, and the, you know, the silly manual adjustment. I'll tell you, this actually is not so bad. Now, you know it's got one of those little four cylinder beaters in it. But um, actually, the, the you know, stuff like this, this is what you get out of a Mercedes CLA, which costs twice as much. But this one's actually easier to use. Let's see, if you push the star, it goes to favorites. This must be the back button. So it goes to compass. And if you keep pushing back, it does that. Eh, that's, not, that's not bad. That's actually pretty cool. I like, the, I like the attempt to make it a little tacky. See, the thing about it is all of these cars, like you got Hyundai making freaking luxury cars. All of these cars, there's just, uh, there's a lot of overlap. The, the, the technology package is a lot of overlap. Oh, this is a manual. Pretty spacious in there. Nah, uh, that, that doesn't look as teched up as this i8 does. Scion IM, $22,000. Economy car attack. Oh, we've got good German girls here. I see they got McDonald's in their country. Mm-hmm. That's right. FRS, BRZ. This is a Subaru BRZ. I made a video about the BRZ when it first came out. Did the test drive with Wu-Tang Clan. Playing on the radio. That was cool. A lot of these people are making videos and a lot of these people are making pictures and everything But the question is how many of them will actually get paid for this stuff on YouTube? How many of them have YouTubes where they're catering to an audience? Me thinks not so many Ooh, Goodness, goodness, Jesus Red beans and rice didn't miss her Some brothers had tried to diss her. Red beans and rice didn't miss her. This is what you can also. Oh, 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 this is a STI. Cool. All right. 
This is kind of the STI something around it. Hold on here. Subaru, Subaru, it's all Subaru. This is another one of those that Mom and I are talking about getting. Man, how many of these things am I going to destroy on the road? This is a cross track. Yeah, this is that new one that they were talking about, the cross track. How many of these things am I going to meet on the road and just like totally just destroy? Like, I hate it when people pull up to the red light and I'm just minding my own business. People trying to race me. Why are you trying to race me? You see that Hellcat logo and you get upset. Up there trying to race me. Okay, Subaru Cross Trek. All right. Okay. Okay, it's. It's all, uh. Hard ass plastic. Oh, micro SDHC. Hi. Oh, be careful. Get up there, bud. I'll shut the door. This is the it's a nice interior. It's pretty spacious. Pretty spacious. What is this like thirty thousand or something? I wonder if this is anything like the, uh, uh, what's that thing called, the Outback. It's, it's probably, it probably handles better than the Outback because it feels lower to the ground. No, no. Can't climb on top of him. <laughs> oh, they got heated seats here. Oh, there's a line for this one. Oh, there is? <laughs> this is a new Forester. It's a new Forester. That, that cross track, I mean, that cross track is, it's, it looks cool. You know, the paint job is nice and everything. Interior feels cheap. But then again, you know, it's a Subaru. These things aren't, wow, it's a lot of space back here. See, basically, that's the thing. When you buy one of these new crossovers, it's like for less than $30,000, you get a lot of space in most of these cars. And that's a, good, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. You have so many choices. Choices are good. Nobody wants to have no choice. Nice and spacious. So you got a Mercedes S-Class up here with some some sick ass gold rims by Illusions NYC. And you got this uh, Porsche over here, GT5. Rims aren't as nice on that. And then you got this Mercedes that like very, very few people even consider buying that unless unless their minds are stuck in the 1980s. 3D printing here. What are you guys making? Car parts? Yeah, well, car related accessories. Car accessories? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. This year is going to be like an accessory. How long does it take uh, to, to actually do this? Though? Depends on the build, really. So I'm like, these will take maybe an hour or two hours. Mm. Some of the bigger pieces we have on that other table took like upwards 18, 16 hours. Oh, 3D car. Oh, no. 
the models. Okay, so I'm going back to the concourse side. This is the north wing. Nothing but economy over here. And by economy, I mean cheap. They had a nice Mercia Lago over here with, uh, with a um, army theme or military theme, which is weird because I didn't see any Aventadors. Like they had the Koenigsegg, they had the Bugatti Veyron, but I kind of find it odd get different prices from that they didn't have an Aventador. Like Lamborghini should have a show here. Lamborghini has like five cars now. They got the Aventador, the Mercia Lago, the uh, Gallardo, the, the Hurricane, I'm, and they got a Reventon somewhere. I'm surprised they didn't have a show. And then they got that new Centenario concept or whatever that is. I don't want my Hummer to have no gun. I want the gun on mine. Okay, so basically, I think I've covered pretty much the entire, the entire show, or at least everything I came to see. Once again, I'm really disappointed by that CT6. I think that if I do continue to stay with Cadillac, I'll probably trade the STS in for a, what is it called? Either an XT5 or probably an XRX. I'm, I'm, I'm really disappointed by the CT6. The interior just feels so cheap. You know, and I they, they're trying to copy Mercedes, but the problem is that they just don't have the, it's, news, it's, it's like they just don't have it. They don't have the energy to copy Mercedes. They don't have the mods. Yeah, we'll and by the way, this Mophie is doing really well. I have 80% charge while I'm recording, and that's up from uh, 20%. Oh my goodness, there's an upstairs. There's an upstairs. Oh yeah, okay, so that, that was the, I already went upstairs. Okay, good, good, good. Good, good, good. So I'm probably just gonna hit the uh, German car show again, and then I'm out of here. Go outside and look at the, uh, the Jeep test tracks that they got out there. You can see the Wranglers and the uh, Rubicons. I kind of ignored the Audi show. This is that uh, new uh, TT concept. Well, not it's a concept. This is actually a production car. This is a TTS coupe. Very, very driver-centric design. It's like everything's angled towards the driver. Seven sport back. I think the entire market pretty much already knows this car pretty well. And then these are the Audis that you can't afford. Unless you're cool. Oh, yes. Where's the new Audi A8? This is the A6, I think. Where's the new Audi A8 at? So 2.0 Turbo A6. The 
This is an A3. So we should have an A right here somewhere. We got the Maserati show. Oh, this is that new Maserati crossover. It's that new Maserati crossover. I forgot what it's called. Excuse me. Um, the name of this uh, crossover is Levante. Levante. Yes. Which means uh, uh, forceful winds, forceful desert winds. Mm -hmm. You guys aren't from uh, Maserati in Manhattan, are you? No, no, no. Okay. Actually, we're with the headquarters. We're with headquarters. Yeah, in New okay. Jersey. That's why I'm North America. Oh, okay. Yeah. No dealers. No dealers. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're not going to give it. Oh, okay. All right, all right. So basically what this is, it's just another crossover designed to sell in a sea of crossovers. So eventually everybody's going to be on stilts. Everybody's gonna have wagons on stilts eventually. I'm sorry, I, I walked away from the Audi show because to tell you the God's honest truth, it wasn't as exciting as the Maserati show. I think I'm gonna wait online. I'd like to see the Ava uh, Levante up close. No, fuck that. Look at this line. I'm not waiting on that shit. I'm not waiting on that line. What are you kidding? That line's too long. That line's way too long. I ain't waiting over there. Oh, yes, this is uh, the uh, GT. Very, very spacious car, actually. Oh, the Camrys. Okay, yeah, I've already seen pretty much all of this. I think I'm just gonna do one more quick shot because it looks like everybody's coming now to see the CT6. So I, I think I'll just do one more quickie pass through of the CT6 because I wanna make a video for my mom's Facebook just so she can see it because next time I see her, you know, I gotta really gotta work on getting rid of that STS. Now that we've got so many options. It has the physical size of the Mercedes S-Class, but what it doesn't have is the damn interior refinement. Two 
just me. And I don't think it's too Guido. And why are we disparaging against our Italian American friends? Yeah. On it. Yeah. A back massage, huh? Yeah. These go up and down. But I'm I'm actually surprised there's no button to make them actually go up and down. Like this unless I don't know. I I know they had a remote control. STS. Yeah, I'm thinking. I was thinking about getting one of these because we have an STS and yeah. it's getting older. But that XTS is the one that's the size beneath this. It's that blue one right there. All right. I'll that's the one that, that all the limo guys drive in. Yeah, it's like fifty-five thousand with a V6, you know. How much is this? This is starts at fifty-seven, and with all this stuff in it, you're talking like. And this was 80. the STS. No, you know what? This is all. This is brand new. Brand new. It, it's basically like a large. A oh, large platform XTS to some extent. You know? But I, I was I was thinking about either this or that, you know, to, to upgrade, you know, or even one of those because that's actually cheaper. That's the SRX. But the thing about it is, yeah, I mean, this is nice, but it ain't no Mercedes S Class though. Yeah. <laughs> no. But, but you're not paying 140. There you go. There you go. No, 110. But, you know, 110. There you go. Wow. Yeah, it's nice though. French. What were you looking for? No, they had everything up in French. <laughs> French. Yeah. Well, now it's back. Maybe it changed. Maybe it They got the Batman throwing star Cadillac logo. CT6 has some impressive technology, but ultimately it's going to be the XTS that, well, and the XT5 that are going to be the volume sellers. I mean, that's 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 just what's going to happen because most people are going to want that crossover ability. They're going to want that higher ground clearance and they're going to want that all-wheel drive. So the CT6 will sell to these limo luxury Uber companies, but, you know, just like the XTS is. The XTS is probably the best. It's probably the better option. But, you know, it's obviously not going to get as much technology as a CT6 says, you know, especially in that back seat. 
but I, I really think I'd be better off just going for an XTS instead of a CT6. like well, well we'll see what happens I can't see myself driving no, escalators I can't afford the name thing <laughs> yep that's exactly right <laughs> Okay, well, I think I'm almost done here. Escalade, running bullets, Alfa Romeos. Yep, I've seen it all. I've seen it all. I've seen it all. I think I've definitely seen it all. came and I think I've seen everything I need to see. How come there's no Lamborghinis? Well, that's actually a good question that I posed myself. I don't know why there's no Lamborghinis. Okay, so I think the only thing that remains on my way out is to take a good quickie look at the uh, excursions out here with the Jeep. And just remember, this video was brought to you by iPhone 
6S Plus, 128 gigabyte. And um, Mofi 8X charger. See? Mofi 8X charger right there. Thank you, Mofi. And thank you, Apple. Now, all I'm going to need is for you guys to make me a 256 gigabyte drive so that this way I can pump five hours of video into my videos. And uh, then I'll be uh, much, much, much happier. You know? So, you already know me. If there's a new iPhone, you already know I'm buying it. So, I'm gonna get me the new iPhone. Oh, snap! They got the Grand Cherokee for the ramp, ramp trip. Ain't that good? Yeah, I'm done. At this point, I had to remove uh, some of the audio from this video because of the fact that YouTube has these ridiculous copyright censors. And what they do is they, uh, they don't really give you a copyright strike, but what they do is if they hear music playing in the background, it removes your ability to monetize your video. And as you know, monetizing your YouTube video is what ultimately allows you to get paid for making your videos, which is pretty much the only reason why I do this in the first place. It's because of the money. Even though I do have fun making the videos, I make a lot of money on YouTube every single month by uh, monetizing the videos. But the problem is, if there's a copyright strike, your money either stops or it's decreased like considerably. So basically, I have no choice but to repost this video and I had no choice but to mute this part of the audio so that um, I could ensure that I get paid for every single video I make. Now, a lot of people were asking me, oh yeah, well, what did you use to record this video? I have an iPhone 6S Plus, 128 gigabyte. The iPhone 6S Plus, unlike the iPhone 6, has an optical image stabilizer, which basically is computer software that allows the computer in the phone to track specific points on the video and to automatically balance itself in order to try to eliminate the, uh, the, the actual hand movements that are obviously going to be made by somebody who's walking. As you can see, the video is extremely... Um, it's clear because I edited and I finalized an iMovie on 4K video settings. And as you can also see, it's, it's pretty well uh, balanced to the point where it doesn't look shaky. Now, YouTube also has its own image stabilizer where what they'll do is they use software in order to track specific points on your video. And if you activate theirs, it'll pretty much do the exact same thing. So um, I don't use the YouTube system because I feel the iPhones is actually powerful enough. A lot of people have looked at my videos while I'm driving and holding the phone and they're like, wow, that's incredibly uh, stable. How do you do that? And it's all because of my iPhone. And that's the reason why I don't even need to know anything about iPhone 7 to know that I'm going to buy iPhone 7. What I have hope for and what I'm hearing is that iPhone 7 is going to have a 256 gigabyte flash drive. I absolutely must have that because this video was a little over three hours long and I ended up having to edit parts of it out because of the fact that it ran so long that when you finalize in 4K, there wasn't enough space on the phone. And the problem is I love being able to automatically edit the movies on the phone. I don't like having to port them over to a computer. Better image stabilizer with even faster tracking which it most likely will because you know one thing i love about apple is they do not ever disappoint me they really do not disappoint me so um that's basically it that's the new york international auto show on the big truck series review channel so basically I'm on my way out and uh, it looks like everything's been a success. Total and complete success. Clean air test track. Yeah, that was the uh, that was the downstairs basement track that they had all those uh, silent electric cars, which I showed you already.
This was fun. Okay, I'm on my way. Oh, what's this? Something I miss? State Farm. I'm gonna go up one more level. Man, it's gonna take about, it's gonna probably take about two hours to finalize this video. So uh, I'll definitely have this video online as quickly as possible. But I can already take, I, I already know it's gonna take a while to finalize this in 4K. So. <sighs> Fun, right? Did I want to know exactly? Concept. So that's about that. I'm done. Got a runtime about three hours. Somewhere near it. <laughs> 